Hi, I'm Christopher Sircell, and I want to talk to you about the progress we've been making on developing and understanding the Rotating Magnetic Field Thruster, or RMF Thruster for short. This is an example of a plasma-based propulsion system, which have been gaining widespread adoption in in-space propulsion applications in recent decades. Plasma propulsion systems generate plasma by stripping the electrons from the electrically neutral atoms in their gas, leaving us with separate positive ions and negative electrons. Once these positive and negative charges are separated, we can use electric and magnetic fields to accelerate these particles to high speeds, often as high as tens of kilometers per second. And we can do this very efficiently. Most notably, thrusters like gridded ion thrusters and hull thrusters are some of the most prevalent and enjoy great performance with high efficiency. But even with existing thrusters seeing such success, we're always on the lookout for new technologies. Shown here is the prototype RMF thruster, designed and built here at the University of Michigan, which has the potential to gain some significant advantages over the thrusters in the sky right now. For example, you can fit hundreds of times more power into the same sized thruster as conventional devices, meaning less spacecraft weight has to be devoted to the thruster itself. You can also adjust your power output as needed far easier than traditional plasma thrusters. This technology lets you use nearly any propellant potentially allowing for refueling operations in space using resources gathered by the spacecraft. And finally, the specific acceleration mechanism used here allows for much easier power delivery than similar thrusters, making the power processing system much simpler to build. So, how does it work? Well, we start with a cone, which we fill with a seed plasma. We also set up a magnetic field that roughly follows the walls of the cone using some electromagnets. Then we use our special RMF antennas to generate a separate magnetic field that rotates around the axis of the cone. This RMF field grabs electrons from the plasma and swirls them around to produce a strong electric current which flows in a circle about the axis of the thruster. This current can push off the magnetic field we made with our electromagnets to shoot a torus of plasma out the mouth of the cone. Then we repeat this process as fast as we need to produce the thrust that we want. When you view the process from the side, slowed down about 10,000 times, it looks like this. However, the efficiency in this device is a little bit lower than we'd like. It's less than 1%, in fact. We need to find out what's going on so that we can determine if this low efficiency is fundamental to the design concept or just poor optimization since our unit represents a very early draft of the thruster. To do so, we use something called a B-dot probe to map the magnetic fields inside the thruster throughout a pulse. When we do, we can see what's really going on from a magnetic perspective and compare that to other measurements. This will let us see how much current we're generating and how it's interacting with the magnetic fields. This movie shows how the magnetic field develops over time, overlaid in a cross section of the thruster. At the beginning of the pulse, not much happens, so we just see our steady magnetic field, but then the current is suddenly generated as the gas ionizes, forming our plasma torus, which is identifiable by the circular magnetic field structure which develops. Using the magnetic field measured, we can then calculate how much current we're driving in the plasma, shown in the cross section of the thruster in the bottom left. With the magnetic fields and the currents together, we can calculate what magnetic forces we expect and try and diagnose how to improve this exciting device. For example, we find here that most of the force we generate is actually directed inward since our radial force is so much stronger than that along the axis. This causes compression of our plasma torus instead of acceleration potentially wasting energy as heat in the dense plasma. This gives us a clue as to how to improve the device, and we're really excited to look for solutions. Thanks so much for listening, and please be sure to check out some of the other videos on the channel.